John, when religions in general and uh, Christianity in specific talks about uh, eschatology, life after death, uh, the resurrection, obviously it's, it's only in the most general terms, but um, I really want to figure out how much we can really uh, speculate in an intelligent way about this, because uh, if, if it doesn't work and there are internal contradictions, maybe the whole thing doesn't work. So I want to push it. I want to push it and see what it means. So if, if, if we're talking about an afterlife, what will it mean for us as individual personalities? I think that's a very important question to pursue. Um, because if it isn't coherent, it can't be a coherent hope. That, uh, that's clear. If you start thinking about these things, you soon see that you are going to have to satisfy, if there is a destiny beyond death, two criteria, one of continuity and one of discontinuity. Continuity says it must be Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, wherever it is, who live again in the kingdom. Not, not just new characters given the old name for old time's sake. <laughs> So what could be the car carrier of continuity between life in this world yeah. and life beyond death? The traditional answer has been the human soul. That's usually been thought of platonically as a sort of spiritual substance that's separated at death and, and death. I think we can't... Immortal, can't be destroyed. Or that, that, that maybe, maybe immortal, maybe is preserved. Um, I think we can't think of human beings in, in that, um, that, 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 that way. We are, I think... Package deals, psychosomatic unities. So have we lost the idea of the soul? Well, I don't think we have, but we have to reconceive it. Now, the soul is presumably the real me. And it, it's almost as difficult to know what the real me is in this life as it might be beyond it. Here am I, elderly academic. <laughs> Here's that schoolboy with the shock of black hair and the school photograph of umpteen years ago. What makes me the same as him? You might think it's a material continuity, but that's an illusion because the atoms that make up our bodies are changing all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm atomically distinct from that, from that, that schoolboy. So what makes me the same? I think in some sense it is the pattern in which those atoms, atoms are formed. The pattern that carries things like my memories and, and things of that nature. That's the continuity. It's the information pattern carried by my body at any instant, which I believe is the soul. Now when I die, of course, that soul well, that pattern will dissolve. But I believe it is perfectly coherent to believe that the faithful God, who is the only ground, in my view, of a hope of destiny beyond death, the faithful God will remember the pattern that is me, hold it in the divine memory. Now, that isn't my life after death, because I need to be embodied if I'm to be truly human. So the Christian hope is not spiritual survival, but death and resurrection. And so God will re-embody that pattern in a new environment of God's choosing. That's where the discontinuity comes in, because there's no point in re-embodying me in a, if I'm going to die again. So it has to be a different kind of matter in which most time I'm embodied. And that is, I believe, the matter of the new creation. Okay, let's look at some of the, the pieces here. If this information pattern that is in the mind of God that's being remembered after our death, right. after our death, that's not conscious. That's not living. It has to be re-embodied. In my if view, I hear you in my view yes, yes. So after we die, there's no consciousness, no existence, until, if, when there's a resurrection. Yes, it's possible, of course. Since the time of the world to come and the time of this world are distinct, it's possible that we go from one to the other at the moment of death. But there might be an intervening period. And that was very extensively discussed over the centuries. <laughs> Soul sleep was mm, the, the way mm, that was often mm, spoken about. Mm, mm. So there would be, there would be, it would not be a fully human life. If, if you're just held as, a, held as a pattern in the mind of God, that's not a fully human life. And whether that's conscious or not, you think it's probably not conscious, but you're, you're, I, I you're think, not I, sure. I probably, I'm not sure. I'll wait and see, I think, is the answer. But I, 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 yeah, I, that, 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 that's a separate question, really. Okay. Um, now, he, here's a problem that I face. I, I can go with you that our lives are, are an information pattern in the mind of God, and then there's a resurrection, and God re-embodies that, and we come back to ourselves. But if God could do that for one, he could do that multiple times. It's the same pattern. I mean, you just reproduce it, just like you're reproducing, uh, copying a hard drive on a computer, maybe a little more complicated. And now suddenly you have, uh, you know, 50 uh, John Polkinghorns and, you know, maybe only three or four Robert Kuhns, and, uh, you know, who's, who's me? Well, God doesn't do stupid things. <laughs> and I think just to repro reproduce clones of people would be a stupid... What would be the point of it? Point of it? Well, so, it, 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 only God has the power to do this. And I think God will use that power in accordance with the divine nature. That's to say, we'll use it 
responsibly, if I may, <laughs> may use that language, and won't, won't create lots of clones. I'm, I'm puzzled. I know a lot of uh, philosophers that talk about the person are worried about this question of, 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 of doppelgangers and things of that nature, yeah. but I, I think it's a foolish worry. If you believe the only power to do that is the divine power, which will always be used suitably and, and properly. The question is, could God do that? If, if God had that power, and, and here's the problem, if God could do that in principle, that would seem to add some incoherence to the whole picture because it's impossible to have multiple states of, the, of, 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 the, of, of our individual personality. Things are exactly the same and, and distinct. That's a contradiction. You have to understand what is meant by saying that God is almighty. It doesn't mean that God can do absolutely anything. The rational God cannot decree that 2 plus 2 equals 5. God can do anything that is in accordance with the divine will. That is to say, in accordance with the divine nature. God is not restrained from the outside, but God is internally constrained by the consistency of the divine nature. And I'm suggesting that a part, a tiny part of that consistency is that God will not foolishly reproduce clones of people. <laughs> okay, but whatever it is, if you believe in the resurrection, it's going to be pretty good, right? I believe so, yeah. Something to look forward to. <laughs>